Hello there. Hi. How you doing? Very good. Good. I'm uh, Sebastian Ochoa, and as you may recall, I have autism. Nice to meet you, Sebastian. It's a pleasure. We meet at last, Matthew yeah. Watterson, a.k.a. Drow from Droll Hunters. That's right. I've been waiting a long time to finally getting to interview you, just like your wife, Rachel Kemsey, did. I'm so happy to be able to talk with you, Sebastian. <laughs> well, I'm very glad your wife told you everything about me and why I like to interview voice actors. But anyway, <clears throat> I have lots of questions I've been willing to ask you. Excellent. Let's go. Tell me, how is it like being a voice actor in many animated shows? It's a pleasure. It's, it's a huge amount of fun. And one of the great things about uh, voice work is that it doesn't matter what I look like. It only matters what I can sound like. So I get to do all sorts of things that are very, very different. And that just makes it really interesting and really entertaining. I see. So that's what you like about being in there, which makes me to one simple, important question. Yes. How did you get into voice acting? Uh, I started on, uh, I started acting just in anything that would have me, whether it was going to be on camera, on stage or uh, voice work. And I was working mostly on stage in New York and started getting more and more voice work. And the voice work was more fun, more varied and paid better. So I decided that I would spend the majority of my attention on voice work. And that was probably about eight, eight to nine years ago. So since then, since about then, since probably eight years ago, I've just been doing voice work because that was the thing that ended up being the, the most satisfying and also paid the best. I see. So this is how you got into voice acting, which of course <laughs> leads me to one question. Why do you like being in animated shows? I think one of the things that's great about animated shows is that they can be anything. It is only constrained by the imagination of the people making the show. And that means that it doesn't matter what characters they think up, what species that character is, what anything that character is. It can be a human, it can be an animal, it can be an alien, it doesn't matter. And it can be made to be just as, um, you know, just as impactful and, and, and just as easily to identify with as uh, a human being on live action. And then also animation often lets you just be a lot more absurd and off the wall, which is just fun to do. I see. So this is why you like being in animated shows, because of the experiences you begin to learn from that. That's right. Which leads me to many questions about uh, many animated stuff. But <clears throat> in the show Troll Hunters, mm -hmm. what was your favorite part about playing that character, Drow? Honestly, it was what happened to the character over the, the duration of the show. Because when the character was first sent out, uh, like when, when they were first casting for it, Drawl was only supposed to be in one or two episodes. Um, he was really sub just supposed to be there in, in those first couple of episodes for a foil for Jim, for, for a, a trial for Jim to have to go through and to learn from. And by good luck on my end, the writers ended up saying, oh, we think we can do more interesting things with this character once we've used him. And so they kept doing more with him. And I think because they didn't really have a plan to do that at the beginning. They just sort of said, oh, all of a sudden we have all of these new things that we're seeing with this character that we think we can do with him. It meant that it was really, really fun to see every single you know, uh, episode, what it was that was happening and, and how the character evolved both as a character and also as a part of the entire show. Because those that show, Troll Hunters, and then all the Tales of Arcadia shows, they had a very clear idea uh, of, the, the macro, like the large scale story that they were telling from the very beginning, the details in, in the middle, I know that they were working through as they went, but they had a lot of ideas and they really kind of knew what they were doing, as my understanding, at least from the start. So to have a character that was one of the ones that they didn't really know 
at the beginning that he was going to be in there for as long as he was. It meant that it, it sort of surprised them um, as it was going through, which meant that it was surprising and, and a lot of fun for me to play with. I see. So this is why you like playing that character, Drell, because of the things that the writers did for you, you and your character. If yeah. I'm not mistaken. The writers were wonderful on that uh, on that show. I see. Because all I know is that I've seen that show, and I must say, you are very great at that at voicing that character, especially right. along with Kelsey Grammer, Fred Tattashore, and Aiden Yolchin, but most importantly, Ron Perlman. Yes. Yeah. They got. They were able to get really, really good people for that show. It's one of the the nice perks of of the people who are making it. They were able to sort of pick up a phone and say, "Hey, this is." Uh, this is something we're doing and we think that you would be great for it. And, and I think most of the people who they called said, yep, we're in. So it, it was a lot of fun. Well, that's very good to hear from you. But anyway, <clears throat> what was the biggest thing when you played Doom Slayer in Doom Eternal? I think finding out that I was doing it, I didn't actually know I was doing it when I went into the session. I, I was, you know, it, a lot of the time with video games, they don't tell you the actual name of the project or the actual name of the character in auditions because they're keeping it very quiet. And so when I <laughs> when I was booked on it, it was under I don't I don't remember the name, but whatever the name they were making it under at that time, the sort of working title. And so when I went in and started recording, I didn't really know what it was I was doing until sort of once I got into it and, and it sort of dawned on me and they said, Oh no, no, you're the actual Doom Slayer, we're, we're voicing him in this one, and that's what you're here to do. So that was kind of a, a shock, and I was actually glad I didn't know going in ahead of time, because I might have spent too much time thinking about, oh, what do I do to make this sound right, as opposed to just going, no, this is what you asked, this is why you cast me and what you asked me to do, and then going, oh, that's what this is? Okay, well, I've already started, so I know what I'm doing now, and I'm just going to keep doing that. Because, um, yeah, that was, that was one where it probably was good that I didn't really know a lot going in. I see. So this is why you got to be in the game Doom Slayer. Oh, you're playing the character Doom Slayer in that game. Because all I know is that I know about the game Doom and all the voice actors in it, which, of course, it's pretty awesome game, you know? Yeah, it's it's a great one. And, and <clears throat> these new iterations of it, they have, you know, some wonderful people in it. I see. So anyway, <clears throat> this is the fact the question from the fans of Castlevania, but <clears throat> how is it like playing Dragon in the show in Castlevania? Castlevania is, was really fascinating to do because it, Castlevania is a game that I remember from when I was a kid, um, like the original Nintendo or whatever. I can't even remember which system it was, whether it was a Nintendo or a Sega or a computer, like a PC. But it's it's one of the ones that's been around for so long, and they've now done such an incredible job of transitioning the sh the IP the the story from the game into the show that it was kind of a blast to get to you know to get to join in, especially after it had been going for a couple of years. So they'd really found their feet and they knew exactly what they were doing. It was really fun to come in and get to to pick up a character like that that is is just fun you know, it's just a joy to come in and do because it's something where you, you, you just get to drop in, be crazy for a little while, and then be like, okay, you guys get to go back to what you're doing now. And those are always fun to do. Anything where you get to kind of come into a show and have an impact on it and then get out is always a, a lot of fun. I see. So this is why you like being in Castlevania, because of the experience you have back in the days, you know, when sure. you were very young. Sure. But anyway... <clears throat> I have this one question, and it's from the fans of the show, D.O.T. Dragon's Blood. But what was your favorite thing about being in D.O.T. Dragon's Blood? That one was, I think in that one, the, 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 the characters that I've done in that are, A, they're very different, but also the characters that I've done in that are all, one of them is very sneaky and sly and underhanded. That's always fun to do because he's just kind of creepy. Another one is just a bombastic blowhard who ends up kind of setting off the thing that causes, 
you know, the entire series for uh, uh, for Davy Online. And like, have, again, having being able to come in and do roles where the characters are, are a, you know, uh, extreme to a certain extent because they they of their behavior because of the choices that they make. And in, in a show, especially a show like that, you have characters that can do some pretty um, crazy things. And I, I, I've been really lucky that the, the stuff that I've done on that show has uh, has been that kind of character where I get to come in and, you know, be a loud, blowhard, uh, uh, arrogant soldier or come in and be like a really sneaky, uh, you know, sort of backhanded uh, fence for illegal or ill-gotten goods. Things like that are just... It's just fun to do because, again, like the nice thing about uh, animation and about doing voiceover is it doesn't matter what I look like. It just matters what I can sound like. So I get to do these things. And on, on that show, I've got to do very, very different characters, uh, you know, in the same session. I'll, uh, in the same session for uh, for the game, I'll get to do completely different characters, which is just keeps it really interesting and is one of the things that makes it uh, so much fun to do voiceover. I see. So this is what you like about being in the show D.O.T. Dragon's Blood. Because all I know is that I've seen the most recent season, season number two. Mm -hmm. And and you know who I get to talk to on Twitter? Ooh. Well, actually, through the comments, actually. The creator of that show, Ashley Edward Miller. We were discussing things when I was commenting to him, and he responded back to me, meaning like we're having a conversation or something. Ashley is lovely. I adore Ashley. Yeah. Excellent. I'm, yeah, Ashley is lovely. Uh, Ashley is uh, an absolute sweetheart and is uh, a joy to work with because he is so creative, but he also knows what it is he's looking for. And he has a great ability to keep in his head the, the entire show. So he knows what he needs in order to tell the entire story. And he's able to explain it to you in terms of, well, this is what I need from you right now so that it will a serve you the character you're playing but it will also serve the entire story that i'm telling and that's a wonderful skill to have for a showrunner i see and also I found he is he is uh very active on uh on twitter and is is uh you know able to to be a wonderful cheerleader for his show yes his own show which is why i was able to get in touch with that guy through twitter getting him to notice me <laughs> And it made me proud, you know? That's wonderful. I'm so glad. Yeah, he's he's a sweetheart. Yes, especially when he accepted my request, you know? And I was like, yes, he did it. He said yes. And so But anyway, <clears throat> what was the best part about playing Nightmare in Hulk Where's Monsters Drell? That one... The, the best part about that one was that we recorded that as a cast over a couple of days. So everybody who was voicing characters in it was in the same room recording, which it doesn't happen at the moment, especially. But uh, uh, most of the stuff that I've done, I've recorded on my own. That show we recorded as a group and the people who getting to stand in a room for two days with the people who are in that show and be able to watch and listen to them work was just amazing. A, it was a a huge amount of fun but b the amount that you can learn by spending two days watching you know fred tattershaw or, or liam o'brien or somebody like that watching them work and watching how they work and how they make their decisions and how they convey the things that they're trying to convey through the microphone is that's those are lessons that you can only get if you get to stand and watch that and so being able to do that for two days and also getting to play at the same time is those are amazing experiences i wish that i got to do more shows uh record more shows in costs in the same room that hasn't really been a thing the last couple of years but if you know hopefully at some point in the not too distant future we will be able to get back to recording as costs again because there are there are certain things that happen when you're actually going back and forth with the other actors that is hard to recreate if you're recording all of your lines and then someone else records all of their lines and someone else records all of their lines. I see. So that was the best part about, about being in that movie, actually. Well, I'm trying to pronounce that right, but yeah, that was very good of your character, of course. Because all I know is that, speaking of what you said about Liam O'Brien, mm -hmm. I did see him in the most recent show that just came out a few days ago called Legend of VOX Machina. 
yes. Amazon Prime. And to be honest with you, I really do want to interview Liam O'Brien since I've worked so hard to get in touch with him, like the others, for months. Yeah, that show is that that show is an naughty. Yes, but that show is an amazing story because that show that that comes out completely comes out of just him and half a dozen friends of his, you know, playing Dungeons and Dragons and then deciding to put their Dungeons and Dragons game on YouTube Big screen. online and then it just getting such a huge following that they said, OK, well, we can we're all voice actors. We can make a show about this. And everybody was so excited, like the entire story of that, uh, of of that group and of Critical Role and, and Vox Machina and stuff is is just amazing. I see. Because all I know is that that show is actually very awesome, you know, especially mm -hmm. of the huge cast casted by, uh, ooh, Mary Elizabeth McCarthy. Gallen, another voice actress I wanted to get in touch with for the last few months. Okay. Which, you know who is the very main reason why I want to interview you and so many others? What's that? My best friend on Facebook named Chris Mayek. Okay. He, is, he interviews like a whole bunch of voice actors he got to interview with for months. Oh, excellent. including Yuri Lewenthal, Tara Platt, Kari Walgren, DC Douglas, so many others. That what he did, that motivated me into getting in touch with more voice actors, which is why on Saturday I got in touch with the guy, Steve Staley. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it's, it is wonderful what people have managed to, to do and how to figure out in terms of beginning to get in touch with the people who they're interested in. And, you know, the way you are starting to say, hold on, I, you know, there's stuff that I want to know about, whether it's voice acting or any topic, there's something that I, there's stuff that I want to know about. And, and we're at a point where it's entirely reasonable to reach out to the people who you want to talk to. And a lot of the time they're going to be more than willing to say, yeah, I'll sit and have a talk with you for half an hour or so. And being able to actually ask those questions and then put it online so that, the questions you had that you wanted to get answers to, you can put out there so that other people can get that same information. It's it's really great that that's become a reality. Yes, that is something I worked so hard to get in touch with. But anyway, <clears throat> there is another question, though. Which character that you have played in the past have been the most challenging to you and why? It's the most challenging. There have been some... Uh, there have been some monster characters you know orcs things like that for um some projects that are challenging just because they're a lot of stress on the voice so there's some characters that are difficult to do for long periods just because it's difficult on your voice um there haven't been any yet that i have not been able to do for the length of a session but there's some there are definitely some where at the end of you know a four-hour session or if, if i have that and then another session in the same day uh i'm i'm not I don't sound great by the end of the day. It, it's going to take me a little while for my voice to recover just because it puts a lot of stress on the voice. So there's some that have been physically stressful and, and a lot of the time uh, certain monster voices can do that, certain big ones, things like that. Things that are, are big that have a lot of texture sometimes can do that. Uh, and then there are there's other characters that are something like you mentioned the Hulk movie earlier, the nightmare character is it's a relatively straightforward character to do but especially when you're doing a character like that in a game like in a game in a in a movie like that trying to make sure that you toe the line of of making him a cartoon you know a, a, a comic book villain but also make him so that the he doesn't get scary to the point where it is beyond the rating of the movie like the movie is not rated r so he has to be a scary comic book villain, but he can't be actually, you know, terrifying like uh, a rated R kind of villain. But also, it has to be able to make sense and work and feel like it exists in the same world that the the movie exists in. So sometimes some of those very very out there characters, and he's one of them, uh, can take a little bit of paying attention just to make sure that you kind of stay on the line of making it a big bombastic you know bad guy but still have it feel like it's supposed to be there i see 
So that's what's been the most challenging to you. But what I can tell, you you do have a very quiet voices, you know, especially when you voice acted in that show called uh, The Croods, which is behind you, you know, as the character Phil, who, you know, the Peter Dinklage voices him. And now you, you right. just sounded more like Peter Dinklage, you know. How do you like doing that? The Croods has been a blast. The Croods is one where it, the... the, the... The, the only disappointing thing with that was that that was going to be a show that we were going to record as a group. And we had the very first table read for the studio, which was about a week or two before COVID happened and everything shut down. And we kept thinking we're, that we were going to be able to record again as, as a cast in the same room. And we've never been able to, which is a pity because the cast of that show is hysterical and it's so much fun to do that that's one that it would be really, really nice to be able to record as a cast. But that's not been able to we we've done we did one or two uh on zoom as a cast but i think the the logistics of that for the engineers quickly became far more trouble than it was worth that i totally understand but <clears throat> that show is just so much fun to do because the writing in it in it is funny and the characters are funny and it's not something that i haven't done something like that before as much it's it's a little broader and a little more family friendly than a lot of the stuff i've done and so it's just been so much fun to do because it's a little different character than I've done in most things. It's, it's you know, he's a very different character than Droll, uh, but it's, he, he is being, you know, being able to do a character like Droll, which is this giant warrior troll that kind of is, you know, semi-indestructible and can, you know, handle himself. And then also being able to do a character like Phil, who is kind of the antithesis of a, you know, warrior uh you know uh, a warrior who can you know handle himself physically this sort of uh, slightly um delicate intellectual who thinks his way through everything as opposed to using any physical capabilities is it's really fun and, and again it goes back to one of the things that's so much fun about voiceover i i would not uh, in live action i would not be able to do both of those i could probably do drawl because i'm the size i am but i probably couldn't do phil because i'm the size i am um so it it you know it allows me to to get to play with things that i wouldn't get to play with if i was doing it uh, on stage or on camera i see so that's what's very good about you being that character in that show yeah Which, also, of course i have one question i want to ask you but have you ever considered about being in your that show that your wife has been called scooby doing guess who Sure. I mean, who, who wouldn't, who wouldn't want a chance to be in a Scooby Doo, uh, a Scooby Doo episode? Scooby Doo is is part of, I think, all of our childhoods. Uh, she, of course, being Wonder Woman, and then you know, being amazing at what she does, she's been able to do a, a couple of episodes of it, doing different things. And uh, I know one of her, uh, one of her proudest moments was was actually getting to to, to deliver the line. I wouldn't, I, I would have got away with it too if it hadn't been for you kids, and. It, yeah, it, you know, the, those are the sort of things that those are the sort of things, projects like that, um, or, you know, if you get to do anything in the Star Wars universe, if you get to do anything in the Marvel universe, if you get to do anything in, in you know, the, there are certain things that are franchises that are part of everyone's childhood and getting to um, be a part of those is is always something that makes you have to stop and go, oh, I'm actually being allowed to be a part of this. It's amazing. I need to make sure I enjoy it while I'm doing it because I never thought I would get a chance to do that. So, so something like Scooby-Doo is absolutely one of those where it's was something I watched as a kid. So if, if somebody gave me the chance to do a, an episode of the Scooby-Doo, of course I would do it. I would do pretty much anything on it just for the chance. I see, because there is an idea that of our character idea I wanted you to be playing as if they ever make a third season, because uh -huh. you know, you'll be a perfect as. What? as a character I came up with called Jeff Ramiro, a director who of who was filming Tony Todd's film, which I wanted Tony Todd to be the guest star. Oh, Tony Todd is, Tony Todd is wonderful. Yeah, because he'll be a very good, good in that show as himself, meaning sure. and revealing that he's been friends with Shaggy and Scooby since their film together, since their film, The Candyman. That, yeah, that... <laughs> That would be that would be a lot of fun. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, t- Tony Todd is, uh, he has, that. that is a man who just has a voice that is impossible to mimic. Yeah, because you know who actually agreed that that Tony Todd, you, and everybody else should be in to the Scooby-Doo? Tony himself. Oh. <laughs> and you know who else agrees to this also? Who's that? Jason J. Luis, Kim Vendel Havel, and so many others. Excellent. Because because you know who I wanted Jason J. Luis to be playing in that <laughs> show? Repraising the role of Superman. Jason is a wonderful Superman. Yes. You, I wanted him to repraise the role of Superman as everybody requests him to do it. And as for Kim Vendel Havel, you know who he'll be a perfect ass? Who's that? Lex Luthor. Yeah. One of the amazing things about Jason, and, and I got this from Rachel, was that, uh, is it, that she pointed out that Jason is wonderful at Superman, not just because he has the right voice and he's a wonderful actor, but the inherent goodness that is who Superman is, is also who Jason is. He's just that good and generous a human being. And that just sort of translates to, you know, when he's playing Superman. And Kiff is just dis- distractingly talented, as I have found out now doing the groups with him. K- Kiff is one of those people who there's, there's kind of no end to what he can do or how funny and talented he is. So he would be, uh, yeah, he would be incredible. Yeah. Because <laughs> I wanted that to happen in the show. That way I'll be like, Haha, that's my recommendation. It worked. I, I bet you Kiff could pull that off, could pull that line off. Even, even of course, everybody, including Jason J. Luis, even agreed to this. No, you've that's been doing, all. You've been doing a wonderful job of, of reaching out to the people who you're interested in talking to and interested in, in uh, you know, asking questions of and, and organizing the opportunity to speak with them. Yeah, because that's what I usually do, you know, trying mm-hmm. to make sure I do what's best. But anyway, <clears throat> what do you like to do before voice acting? Well, I don't know what I like to do. The reality of my life is that we have small children. So normally what I'm doing is trying to wrangle an absolute madhouse and then going, oh, I need to be in the booth in three minutes and running out of the door and over to the office to to get into the booth. (laughs) So it's been a while now since I've actually been able to choose what I do right before I I, I do a a voice session. Usually I'm I'm having to do whatever is necessary to try and uh, uh, keep everybody in our house happy and healthy. I see. I think if I had if I had the choice, I'd probably uh, spend a, a little time before it, uh, you know, warming up and relaxing. But that's that's not been a reality for a, a, a few years. Now I'm getting the picture of it. But in any case, <clears throat> what do you usually do after a voice session is over? Uh, the, the, the boring part of it is to go through the sound file and do any of the engineering I need to do because, you know, for the, especially for the last couple of years, we've done all of the recording and stuff at home for the most part. So we do all the engineering ourselves. Um, and then, you know, making sure we get it off to the, uh, the producers uh, or to the, the, uh, the, the client so that they have what they, uh, what they hired us for. Uh, and then again, not dissimilar to before a session, I usually, the second it's done, I, run out of the the office and run straight back to to, to trying to help with uh, uh trying to help manage the small children that we have that are constantly trying to destroy our home i see so that's what happens every time that sounds wonderful you you're certainly doing a very very good job of uh, of getting yourself into t- in touch with the people who you are interested in talking with and uh and making a very good case for why it's a why it would be great for them to have the chance to talk with you i'm super honored that you get to say that and i'm and i'm blessed with what you said well i'm i'm so happy this has been so much fun i've really enjoyed the chance to talk with you sebastian so thank you it so was, much for reaching out it there. was so nice talking to you and thank you for taking the time to speak to me and i yeah. hope we we meet each other again through Instagram and most importantly, Twitter, if you would like to follow me since your wife follows me. Sure. Yeah, I'll find uh, Twitter's, I'm on Twitter even less than Instagram, but I am on Twitter, so I will find you and follow you on Twitter. That sounds great. Yeah. Oh, and one more thing before we go. Sure. Would you like to tell your friends, uh, Davey Mitchell and so many others about our interview together? In case if I tag them along, they should know about our interview 
just like I've interviewed many others, including Steve Staley and many, so many for months. Sure. Yeah. Anybody, uh, anybody who I'm friends with, who uh, uh, who you are trying to get a hold of, I will uh, I will let know that I will let them know that I you know that you and I spoke and that Rachel and you spoke and that uh, whenever they have the opportunity, they should uh, organize a chance to to sit and chat with you. <laughs> Sweet. I was hoping you might say that. And Absolutely. to be honest with you, you're actually one of my favorite actors, along with so many others. I've get to encounter her, including Fred Tattashore and so many others. Thank you. Yeah, Fred, right? Fred is amazing. Fred is Fred, Fred is just a, 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 an absolute marvel to watch. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest, whenever I'm making my own show, I will definitely cast you and your wife to your show. And I will never forget it. Never. Sebastian, Thank you. that's so sweet of you. It is what I do, you know, for the <laughs> right. sake of of making sure it looks awesome like the others that sounds amazing yeah well then i will see you again through through instagram and twitter and i hope i get to you know show you the video and post that we do together cool i can't wait all right and i'll see you then my friend all right take care sebastian it was wonderful to talk with you you too and tell your wife i said hello i shall do i'll give her your best take care (laughs) All right, then. Bye-bye.